Hello, metalheads. Welcome to the Noble Precious Metals Report. I am Brad, as always, your host, and today is July 13th, 2021. Can you believe it already? So for those of you who are just the facts kind of people, here is the quick hit stats for the day as I know it. And I know I'm taking my life into my hands by recording this at 9.26 a.m., four minutes before uh, market open. But here we go. We have several economic reports that are out today. Um, we have the NFIB Small Business Index, Consumer Price Index, the Core CPI, and of course, uh, federal budget numbers are coming out at 2 p.m. Um, the Consumer Price Index uh, and the Core CPI have both been reported as well as the NFIB. Uh, NFIB has some slight positives to it uh, at 102.5. Um, the CPI is currently up at 0.9%, as well as the core CPI is also at 0.9%. So those are not necessarily that great of signs, but I'll dig into that shortly. Um, moving on, the big board is mostly red, including equities. Silver is down. Gold is down, retail silver is tracking lower compared to previous weeks, and retail gold is still up in comparison to previous weeks. So that is your quick hit. And in the big board, as we can see, uh, and actually things have already begun to change just a little bit. Um, when I first fired this up, crude oil was actually, uh, the entire energy sector was, was still pretty red. Um, but the major indices are still on that negative territory. Uh, the Dow is down, uh, the S&P is down, the NASDAQ, the Russell, and even the foreign indexes are, are down slightly. Within most of the rest of it, we can see that uh, softs are, are definitely down in most, most parts between uh, cocoa and cotton and coffee and hay lumber came down um, by $42 or 5.56%. Uh, maybe that means that we can finally finish those uh, additions and decks and all sorts of things, or at least be able to afford to build birdhouses with our kids. Um, however, metals um, are mostly down today. Uh, we can see that uh, palladium, uh, negative 0.61, copper 1% down, platinum 1.5% down, uh, silver at 2607 is down uh, to 0.64%, and gold is slightly positive now uh, at 0.1%. So uh, not necessarily something that's incredibly overwhelmingly positive, but then again, you know, you, you take what you can get. So let's move on to the economic reports. As I had mentioned, the NFIB Small Business Index came out today. Um, that was predicted to be at 100%. Uh, it's not showing on the board, but I did do the independent lookup on it, and it is 102.5. So the key hits on that are really that uh, that's up 2.9% or 2 2.9 points from, from previous, um, which that's actually coming from the from the NFIB and not from what the dashboard is saying. But what they found is in the survey from that occurred in June is that uh, owners are expecting better business conditions over the next six months. Um, that's the question. It rose 14 points, but it's still a net negative 12. Um, it's it's an improvement, but it's definitely still in very negative territory. Um, the earning trends over the past three months have improved six points to a net negative 5%. Um, so again, both of those numbers are still very negative. And the net percent of owners raising average selling prices increased seven points to a net 47%, which is seasonally adjusted. That's the highest reading since January 1981. And any time that we have economic factors that are looking at 1981 as a comparison, it wasn't the most positive time in the world. If the consumer price index and the core consumer price index are an indication, that is not the relief that we're expecting. So the consumer price index, uh, the previous period was 0.6%. Um, the median forecast was hoping that it was going to go down to 0.5%. 
but in a stunning reversal, it went up to 0.9%. And pretty much the same, same story with core CPI. Uh, the previous value was 0.7%. They were forecasting optimistically a 0.5%, and it also went up to 0.9%. So that's not necessarily that great. But tomorrow coming up, we have the producer price index, which is always great. And I'll explain more about that tomorrow and not waste time today. So let's move on to that 10-year treasury note um, and see where we're at with that. So as we were looking at the 10-year treasury note, the close yesterday was at 1.36. And we weren't necessarily certain exactly where that was going to or, or what was going to happen with it. But it does tend to be slightly going upwards. Um, we'll have to see where things go, especially as the markets open, the day progresses, and these new numbers are factored in. And first up on our board is, is the silver market. So let's look at that. I'm just going to get rid of last week. Um, it's not that important to me at this point. Um, but let's let's take a look at what's actually going on. So as we start looking from market opening um, on Sunday through through the current price today, uh, there there are a few things that we can take note of. Again, as always, um, the default on this is the five day um, rolling volume weighted average price, and that's what we're seeing with the. Uh, center line as well as the the green and the red bands. So as we start to look at that and and try to gain some guidance on where price is movement and relative to that, we can definitely see that the price has kind of wandered all over um, around around that VWAP and it definitely from yesterday uh, we had this down point around 9:55 a.m. Uh, with 2604. Um, and that shot up. Uh, we had a pretty quick quick hit. Um, what was that, about an hour? Uh, no, actually 44 minutes. Um, so we shot up all the way to 2630. Now from that point forward, um, we saw that climb and climb and climb all the way into, uh, you know, last night at 1050 p.m. Uh, when the price hit 2641. Uh, declined slightly, uh, but it was still riding above this this average price. Even the even these VWAP, uh, these standard deep bands. We finally had it where it started to pop down, and it hit this low at this point, uh, twenty six fifteen at seven thirty this morning, and that popped up again, and that's always kind of interesting uh, when when things do that. And, and I was looking at the, at the actual volume uh, a little bit earlier, just trying to figure out if that was something that I, could, that I could dig in. And it's easier to kind of talk about this. But the actual volume at the point that moved the price that much was minuscule. It was, you know, a few hundred contracts that, that traded between, uh, between everything. But we can definitely see that as we're moving on, yeah, I'm just going to zoom in on this a little bit more. We can see that the actual average price, um, as it moves through, we can see the close is, is the white band in the middle. Um, the bars surrounding it in the shaded area represent the actual price distribution between high and low. And we can definitely see where that's starting to expand a bit. There's, there's a lot of movement within the, within the individual periods on what's going on. So so there's definitely some hesitancy. There, there's not necessarily consensus at this point on where the market is moving. So looking at that, it's just something that we just have to kind of take into account and understand for how things are going throughout the day and especially in light of the new numbers. And with every new report that comes out that shows that there's you know, positive or you know, so, some growing inflationary pressure or anything like that, that's always a bad sign, and it's going to affect price. So we, we just have to recognize that. But if we start looking at where things should be, as I apply the previous VWAP, um, one of the interesting portions is that the previous day's uh, volume weight average price had that same adjustment. So this right here, we can assume 
at that point, um, and I will draw a box around it just to give you kind of an idea. Um, at that point where that shift occurs, we can definitely see a, a massive influx of volume at that point. And what that does is that actually shifts the way that everything moves. So there is definite adjustment with, with the volume weight average price. But then as we start moving forward on this, we can see that nothing occurs. And again, it's right in line with uh, pretty much the anemic volume that we had seen. Now, if we overlay this with um, the average price uh, for the intraday, we can see that we're right in that zone, um, which as of right now is sitting at 2609. So we're definitely way too high. We're, we're down pretty much around uh, the negative one band right now. Um, so that tells you exactly how much movement we've had even since I froze this just, just a few minutes ago. So let's move on to gold and see what gold is doing. So gold's our buddy. It's been doing pretty good for us lately. We can definitely see some ups, some downs, uh, the dips. It, it's not like silver where it was riding well above where the uh, volume weight average price was. It's actually, uh, we were poking down yesterday considerably. Uh, we got down, you know, 1793. That low price at 10 a.m. was 17.91 as part of that uh, part of that period, but we recovered pretty good by uh, you know around that same point um, as silver at around 10:30 last night. Um, we we're back up, you know, 18:12. Uh, we started going back up again after a little bit of a decline, but it was only a few dollars. Um, so then we finally started peaking up. You know, first thing this morning. Around 8:20, uh, we're at 18:14. Uh, then we had some slight declines, but you know the high price within that period was 18:18, 18, 18, um, with a low of 18:12. So that's a real wide band, um, you know, kind of destabilizing, similar to the way that silver was. Now we're just kind of middling around. We're at 18:10, and just trying to figure out where everything goes. So if we look at the previous day VWAP, uh, we can see that uh, just based off of that activity, and especially the volume movements, um, we can see that you know that was at 1805. But again, we have this very long, kind of a swooping line that that really indicates that there's not a significant amount of volume that's in play because there's not a lot of shifts, even on, even on the previous day VWAP, where you would expect a little bit more movement. If we apply the intraday. We can see that even up here, it's very flat. Um, even on intraday that began, you know, what is it, nine and a half hours ago, um, we would expect that there wouldn't be quite that much solidification of of the way that everything is. So, so these aren't real high volume days. If price movement happens, it's going to be by dedicated people who are who are in smaller smaller amounts of uh, quantities, and they're just gonna kind of surgically strike, um, but it, it's really hard to say, and I think that the budget numbers are going to going to have a little bit more of an effect on it, as well as um, as the market begins to begins to awaken. Uh, before noon, we should know direction of where things are. So if we look at the five-day uh, price comparisons, um, I'll just dig this up real quick. You know, we, we started at zero, uh, five days ago on the 8th, we're not having a bad week overall, even though we've got some uh, some down days, things like that. I mean, we're still up 1.12% on, on price over the last couple of days. Um, so that's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, if we apply gold on that, gold's actually doing a little bit worse uh, because gold had such a decent week last week. So, I mean, we're definitely, you know, 0.9%, 0.89%. Um, so both are in positive territory, but it's just that uh, you know gold isn't quite having as stellar a week as it as it did last time. And getting to the gold silver ratio, we can see that uh, in current market to market prices, we're at 69.08, which isn't too bad. Uh, we're still under the magic 70. 
Um, however, the retail to retail, um, the silver one ounce generic to the gold one ounce generic uh, average price is still over that 60 mark. Uh, we're at 60.59, and that really is just coming in from, from that strength of gold that we had last week. And, and we're still seeing it this week as well. So on that note, let's move over into retail silver. Now on the on the retail silver chart, we can see um, a few things. One, I did uh, for aesthetic reasons, I'll just call it out. I did change this up a bit because I realized that uh, some of the lines can be a little bit hard to see. Uh, so I just did a uh, white outline on on those bars so that hopefully provides a little more contrast for you viewers. Um, you can kind of see the differentiation between between the different items. As we look at the benchmarks, we can see that you know like one ounce generic silver um, last week was at 31.53 on average uh, this week it's at 31.46 uh, so we've definitely had a decline and it's even down from from the two week ago period at 31.50 definitely there's a softening there on, on the generics it's it's nothing that's you know you're not writing home or you know racing out into the streets for it but but it's a few pennies and if you shop well that could that could make all the difference um, the Philharmonic is still up over last week and even the, the prior week to that at 33.05, um, so it's up about 15 cents. But again, its premium piece seems to do pretty well. See, it seems to hold its value relatively well. Uh, the Canadian Maple Leaf is down just a hair, uh, down by 10 cents uh, from the previous week. However, it's still two cents over the prior week, so, so it's riding right in the middle. Uh, the Silver Eagle, on average, uh, we're seeing 41.93. Prior week was 42.18, and the week before that was 41.96. So it's at the uh, at the three week low. Now my speculation on that, and and this is just coming to me right now, so I'm kind of riffing um, extemporaneously, I guess. Is I wonder how much of that has to do with this new Type Two Eagle, and, and I'd be interested to hear hear some comments on that. I haven't held one in my hands. I haven't gotten out to uh, got to see one directly yet, but it it really didn't set me on fire. It wasn't something that I felt wow that that's a great design. It seemed kind of meh, um, and and that seems to be kind of a lot of the consensus. I haven't heard a lot of um, strong advocates for it as either in commentary or any anywhere else really um, so i wonder if there's an average um, demand decline just because of that i wonder if uh, the venerable silver eagle is going to lose its seat um, at the at the high end of the silver table um, it, it's hard to say but it'll be interesting to to watch and see how it shapes up and i'd like to get your opinion on it too going through um, and, and again, I'm, I'm kind of skipping these lower charts. Um, there is stuff to say, but it's, it hasn't been that much of, a, uh, of an interesting week or, or period that, it, that bears going into and wasting time on. So I'm just going to move into retail gold now. And retail gold. Um, as I said uh, when we started out in the quick hits, uh, retail gold is up still. Uh, slightly, we can see the that gold eagle tenth is up at twenty seven eleven. That that that's a decent amount. Uh, the one ounce gold, uh, the generic, is eighteen ninety two. Prior week was eighteen sixty four. Week before that was eighteen sixty five. So we had kind of last week and the week before were pretty flat in comparison to each other. Um, this week there there is some some popping that's gone on. Uh, the panda is up at uh, 1,900 per ounce. The kangaroo is at 1,902 versus last week at 1,873. Um, the Canadian maple leaf is at 1,926 versus last week's 1,903. And the gold eagle is at 1,980 versus last week's 1,951. And uh, just to round out the, the top, top benchmarks, we have the gold buffalo. At 2016, um, previous week was 1998. So we have had some increases, uh, some decreases, things like that. But overall, the market is moving about where I would expect it to with the with the inflation numbers of where they are.
Um, it is now 9.48, and really, even with the markets open, we aren't seeing much change. Uh, the Dow, the S&P, the NASDAQ are all down. Um, metals haven't really changed that much. Everything that was, everything's kind of centering around that zero mark. Um, you're seeing the the greens get darker, the reds get darker. Um, it, it's it's really turning into a flat day, but it seems almost it, it kind of feels like more of a negative flat day. But we'll have to see where things go, um, and that's going to do it for today. Tomorrow we have some some big reports that are coming out, as well as Thursday. Thursday is a monster report day. Um, so I expect that by the end of the week, we're going to be getting a lot more interesting stuff going on. And uh, so if you like what this report is, uh, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Um, the numbers always help. The views help. Everything else does. And we want to get this into a good educational position so that people can understand what's going on with the markets. But until next time, happy stacking. Thank you.